go to this is Otsukimi and this is Casual Crypto and Coffee. I'm glad you could join me. Um, I want to be upfront and apologize um, for quite a bit actually, um, but it also was the holiday season, so um, a lot of things were in play. I was uh, I was sick. I'd say about uh, middle of December, I had a sinus infection, a pretty bad one, probably probably one of the worst ones I've had in my lifetime. Um, and that was, I was recovering through that. And so, um, I, what I did was I prioritized my, um, observations with Otsu videos, um, over the casual crypto and coffee videos, um, because it was just a lot of, it was a lot of video content to cover in one week because I'm also doing the Academy. And so, um, it got, it got shifted and along with the holidays that also shifted as well. And then, um, as a result of my sinus infection, I also had a tooth infection because um, I do have uh, one tooth that's not doing very well and it seems like it got infected as well, which caused an abscess tooth. So I've been been in a lot of pain. Um, and so I recovered slightly right around Christmas weekend and I went back kind of into um, illness and a couple days afterwards. So um, for the past week, really, I've been in a lot of pain. I've actually lost like 12 pounds because I just haven't been able to eat and I haven't been able to drink coffee because of my tooth, right? So then how can I, how can I talk about coffee um, when I can't drink coffee, right? So um, today is actually the very first day that I've been able to drink coffee. I have drank maybe a quarter of, uh, quarter of it, yeah. Um, not that I need to drink coffee for this video, but that's kind of the theme. And then I've been sick and yada yada. So I apologize for all of that. I, the good news is, is I do plan to ramp up my videos from now on. Um, you should see um, the observations with the Otsu on uh, Monday, Monday mornings, Sunday nights, depending on where you might live. <clears throat> um, this is technically Thursday um, today where I'm at. It might even be Friday depending on where you live. Um, but uh, um, Casual Crypto and Coffee is supposed to be Wednesdays. So um, if this works for you, let me know in the comments and we can kind of adjust that. I think. I think we might shift back to Wednesdays um, and because that seems to be more market oriented to give you better information. But um, just let me know. Maybe you want something more casual as you're going into the weekend. Um, that's okay. And so also uh, my observations videos uh, tend to be a little uh, shorter than casual crypto and coffee. These tend to be about an hour long. Um, I'm going to adjust that as necessary as well. But let me know. Is this too long? Do you want something shorter? Are you okay with the long format? Um, it's typically designed to um, just watch the charts with me. A lot of these coins I have not looked at this week. Um, and so I'll give you real-time insights um, on these coins. Um, so that's, that's part of the MO with this. And so for the coffee section of this um i actually picked one without i typically i let my telegram members if, if you if you're not in the telegram um, i'm going to leave, leave a link down below that you can join the telegram um, but my telegram channel is typically reserved for my coffee picks so i have a collection of coffee um that's i think 12 different coffees and i let my followers or subscribers in the telegram pick which one i drink this time I did not, uh, mainly because, you know, enough time went by where I kind of opened my own. And so um, I am currently drinking an, an El Salvador coffee. Um, so it's El Salvador uh, Rosa with honey. And that's that's the bean. I didn't add honey to it. Um, and that's honestly, that's been in the collection. Um, that's That's been my favorite one of... Um, a coffee called Onyx Coffee Labs. Uh, they're in the Midwest. Um, they're actually, I think, in Arkansas, but um, they deliver all around the United States. Some of the best coffee that I've ever tasted. This this is about twenty five dollars a pound, so it's a little bit on the heavy side. I've I've ordered about two and a half pounds already, um, but I had a sample pack from the collection, and so that's um, that's the pick that I I basically picked <laughs> um, for today. So. It's a very fantastic clean cup. Um, it's it's very like bright, um, a good, really good finish, um, really good light roast as well. And um, El Salvador is kind of known for their bigger beans, and it's it's by far uh, my favorite um, of the collection. 
Um, and like I said, I've, I kind of, it's not really fair because I've bought um, I've bought previous um, bigger bags of those before. And that's one reason I, I did pick it today is because I knew it would be something I like. And then um, next week we can go into something kind of more randomized. So <clears throat> um, very good. If you, if you do get, um, if you do try to buy some Onyx Coffee Lab, I'm not sponsored by the way. This is just a thing. Um, I definitely recommend getting that one. Like I said, it's a little on the high side, about $25, $27 a pound. Um, but it is by far their, their best one. And so sometimes they're sold out because you can't get it. But if you like it, um, that's good. Um, otherwise, we'll um, if, if you don't like it, that's okay too. So also um, a little bit of a brief before we get into this. Um, I also run Apex Academy, uh, which is a 12-week trading course. It's it's more than just like I want to emphasize though. It's not your typical trading course. It really isn't. Um, and I'm I've been trying to diversify myself. Um, from the typical like paid group leader kind of BS because that's not what this is. This is this is a um, a twelve week intense. It's it's very very intense, and it's a market or it's not a marketing. It's a it's a mentorship group. Um, I have a marketing business. That's why I said it. Um, but it's, it's a twelve week mentorship group where um, you get hands on time with me. Um, I know I have a lot of people always contacting me for things. This is kind of a way to. <clears throat> say, all right, you you want me to talk to you privately? You know, I get a lot of DMs, um, Telegram, Twitter, Discord, all the time. Like, hey, what about this? What about this? You know, um, how can I trade this? Um, how come my trade is good but my execution is not? And so, and all those is like I can answer those um, much better if I have kind of a uniform approach, and that's part of what the academy is. Um, you get one-on-one -on -one time with me um, to ask as many questions as you can for the 12-week period. Now, um, that being said, we are in week five currently. We're almost into week six, so it's currently halfway over, but um, it, you can still sign up. There's no discount currently. The discount period has been over. The discount was available for the first um, four weeks. Yeah, four weeks. So... <clears throat> And you can't do it monthly anymore because um, the people that sign up for monthly have already went through a full month. So um, it's you have to pay the full three-month pricing, which is $540. I know that's a little steep, but if you compare it to the content that you get, um, it's, it's honestly on the cheap side. A lot of people have emphasized that they've gotten their money's worth after only two weeks. Um, I've had some people tell me thank you literally almost every week. And so that's... That's really good. Um, it, it also comes with 54 hours of video, and a lot of that's centered around a rune based content. I'm the only one, pretty much in the world, and I don't mean to say that in a, in a lofty way, but um, I, I've learned to use a rune here very comprehensively, and um, that's even so much so that the creator of a rune doesn't use it this way, and it's been very proficient and very profitable. So um, I'm. This is the only source where you can get kind of advanced a rune analysis and so that's one one third of the education i'm also the other two thirds is price action uh, um, education and trend based education along with momentum so you really get four types of education and, and about 54 hours of content so i'm averaging i'm averaging right around six hours of content so i'm right at about 30 hours of video so i think i'm going to beat the 54 hours um and so there's also extensive risk management stuff, um, um, trading application. We are just starting to end the full textbook education style, and we're going into practical application. How can you apply this to your own trades? How can you come up with your own system? And so that's, <clears throat> that's what it's designed to do. It's designed to feed you all the really good stuff about trading and not tell you any of the BS clickbait crap about it. And then once you get all the textbook stuff, I say, all right, let's put this all out on the table and see which ones are working best for you. We find that out. We come up with your own system. And at the end of the 12 weeks, uh, we say goodbye. And you you go onto the horizon with your own system um, that's built by you. That's based off of the things that I've seen that has worked well um, for pretty much everybody. So... Um, it, it's a very unique system. I, I, I really want to emphasize this is not a paid group in a sense. Um, 
That being said, if you don't like to come up with your own system, we do have trading bots. I've got four of them. All four are based off of Arun. And so again, these bots are very unique. They're very niche and, and they've been very profitable. Um, the, the, the centerpiece bot called Apex Bot um, has done 74R in December. And so that's that's monumentally much more than um, pretty much every uh, pretty much everybody that I've seen on Twitter. And that again, that's not meant to be a lofty thing. I'm just comparing the data. A lot of people said that um, December was a terrible month to trade, and I disagree. And my bot disagrees. Um, it was it was a very profitable month for us for the trading. And so I want to emphasize that. So you can still join. And so. Um, I should digress from this here in a second, but <clears throat> today is still week five. But if you sign up for all three months, you still get access to the previous weeks that we've already been through. Um, so you'll get a, you'll start off if you join with third, you know, thirty hours of video content already, and then you can sift through that. So it's not too late to join, even though we're halfway through. And so, um, I, if you did want to join, I would recommend joining within the next two weeks because then we're going to get into very, uh, we're going to get really into a lot of um, probability statistics and um, emotional trading, a lot, a lot of, a lot of more advanced stuff. That um, if you're not, if you're, if you are a, a more of a new trader, um, you're going to get left behind because there's just so much that you need to watch before then. And so you also get these videos after you leave you don't have to watch these videos um so it's it's a very comprehensive thing um alumni what if, if people that are there for the full 12 weeks they're also considered alumni so they get special pricing for the avon bots that are coming later this year so um a lot a lot's going on and so please ask me any questions about that i'll leave also a link in the description um for that below so that's Apex Academy, but we're going to go ahead and get started on the casual crypto section. All right, so we're going to do a brief um, <clears throat> on the Bitcoin. Actually, we're going to do a kind of do a precursor here. Go to the total market cap, as I always do. I mentioned this from the weekly video. We're in kind of a, a really large uh, rising wedge, so to speak, and this is interpreted two different ways. So if you're a trend trader, this looks a little bit more bullish than a price action trader would view this. Um, and so one thing to keep in mind, this is a consolidation period. If we, if we treat that as an order block, here's your resistance point. Um, but the, the climb up didn't even get to that resistance point. So if we look at it, um, from, from this perspective, we had, uh, the swing low order block, it touched up to the, um, it touched the, the retest of that. And so we're kind of in this range. So. We can kind of see this formation where consolidation um, range up, mark down, consolidation range up, mark down, consolidation range up, mark down, consolidation range up. Now we, as you might think, we are expecting a mark down. So that's that's how that looks from the total market cap. And obviously we don't trade the total market cap. Um, and so your analysis is, is a little subjective because this is a market cap and also kind of an index in some ways versus an actual asset so um some of this is going to be some of the analysis won't actually cater to um, a market cap um, chart but right now we're seeing the same thing you know um had a retest here so this this is very formulaic and so i can definitely see um right now why people have more of a very bearish outlook now that being said i am I am probably like, um, if I had to really set it out, I'm like 55% bullish, 45% bearish. It's very close. Um, but I'm leaning neutral to very slightly bullish. And and this is this is one reason because and we're seeing a mix of it, right? Some price action perspective. This is this is bearish. We need to at the very minimum reclaim this, but more than likely reclaim this. Um, from a trend standpoint, we can see the rising wedge playing or the falling wedge i should say uh playing into it but we still need to break um we still need to break this section here so not a lot going on um i think you're not really going to get a decision until february and so you know and, and i i said this in the in the academy as well like for january i i don't really think that we're going to expect very much i think we're going to be 
we're going to be chopping. Um, but and, and people say that a lot, right? People say, oh, we're just going to chop. We're going to chop this, chop that, you know. Um, but that's it, it really doesn't do any good to talk about it unless we decide, like, what's what's the point, right? And so for this, I think we are going to chop to anticipate a larger move. And typically this does happen at market bottoms. And so if we if we uh, consolidate and chop here, if we don't make a new low fairly soon, I think that's a good chance that we start building pressure for it, a new demand um, to a regional um, high, which would be the first, you know, the first high that we've had for a year, which is, is just crazy. Like we're used to things going down, right? And so um, I, I do think it is time to reconsider that approach um, to get more of a neutral um, positioning. I think downside momentum is is very minimal at best. Even if even if we do get a fifty percent drop from here, so from from Bitcoin that would be like nine thousand roughly, or you know eight thousand whatever, eight thousand four hundred. Even if we get another forty percent drop or whatever to get to like ten thousand, I still think that that's. Um, I still think that has a minimal drawdown because um, chances are like you're not going to short that very proficiently. Um, we've had chances to short like some of you guys have probably we'll just go into the Bitcoin chart. Um, some of you guys have probably tried to short this constantly and you guys have been stopped out. Right. So that's that's worth considering. I think I think downside uh, don't just think that downside means short or upside means long. It's perfectly normal to let positions go up without longing them and let positions go down without shorting them. You don't have to short, you don't have to long every move. Um, and one of the main reasons is because of the reward might not be there. Um, that was that was a situation with Nier. I This was a position that I talked about in the academy um, yesterday. And because we had, um, I think I had a buy signal right here. Um, but, um, as far as the daily, um, it went up pretty strong, right? But as far as the as far as the reward on that, the reward wasn't very high. So we had a high percentage, but we didn't have a high um, risk rate. So that's the thing. Like you see these P and Ls with a lot of people on on CT, and it's like, oh, they made fifty percent, but yeah, they only you know their risk percentage was probably like twenty percent. So they only made you know what like. 2.1% of their portfolio. It's not very high. And so I want to emphasize that percentages don't matter. Percentages rarely matter in the context of long-term portfolio management. Um, what your what your R value is matters a hundred times more. Uh, because if you're, you may get a thousand percent gains, but if you're only risking five bucks, it doesn't matter, right? So I really want to emphasize that. But that was uh, that was the position. We had a lot of uh, positions fire. Actually, we um, we did take advantage of the green markets for the past forty eight hours. Um, but near was one that pumped, but did not give us a high return. So I want to keep that in mind because you could also have something like this, and it can pump back down. So um, digress from that. But I, I do want to emphasize as far as the macro, we can kind of revisit this, and I think this was on the monthly. Um, no, it wasn't. I don't know what day this this was. Um, let's go to a different chart, actually. Finance and go to three day, maybe. Uh, there was something that was telling me. Um, I don't know. I probably should have been more prepared for that. But anyway, we'll go to the two week chart. No, we'll. Um, I think it was right here, yeah. So, um, we'll get rid of this. I'm not really sure why that's there. All right, so clean this up a little bit. And we got the swing high. And I've mentioned this before, is that we had a double dip here, breakthrough from the, again, this was FTX related. And so that brings kind of an anomaly. Like, I think it was meant to go down anyway, but um, that was also more of a, uh, manufactured capitulation mini capitulation versus a natural one but i still think um it naturally plays in i've always been a big fan of focusing on the charts versus events because long term you can still see um still see the charts play out as they would have so i think we would have got that anyway 
Um, but again, I've been focusing on this wedge here. And so we got that from a, a trend perspective. Let's look at the liquidity. Again, I mentioned the sell zone up here um, that was in line with the very top of the, of the previous market. Um, I was uh, I was ridiculed back then and that's okay. I'm being ridiculed right now for this buy signal currently, which means the buy signal should could go down as much as 11.4. So, so here's the thing. These signals are not actually like, like, oh, you buy at the can to close and then that's the top or bottom word, right? It's meant to be at the actual wording. And so we can go down as low as 11.5 and this could still be a valid placement because this is not a signal. This is a liquidity area. So um, this means that we are having problems with price liquidity at the this current point all the way down to the eleven thousand dollar mark and so that also lines up with this as well so we could i mean we could see something in this range and it could still this still could be valid i'm so what i'm really trying to say is be prepared for this to reverse on the bullish side um much faster than you might think or set your bids whatever you need to do right um so uh, that plays into it. I also had the divergence here um, that is still valid. Um, we had a set of lower lows. We are not going down. Um, the RSI is still holding strong. Um, I mean, it's not strong, relatively speaking, but it is strong as far as confirming a divergence. And I know people disagree with me. That's okay. If you have an interpretation, I would I would like to, like to see it. Maybe just tag me um, below or... Maybe on Twitter, I'm completely okay to, to talk about it. Um, but but don't accuse me of something like being wrong. Like if you have a valid point, let's talk about it. I And I say that because I've had people say, oh, you're completely wrong. You're so stupid. Well, tell me. Like let's have a rational discussion and discourse about it. Don't just accuse me and walk away because that's how you get blocked. You know, and I've, I've, I've had to mute and block people lately because of that. Um, I've had people accuse me about my academy, uh, say that um, it's it's there's a bunch of red flags because I don't show any backtesting performance. Um, okay, that, that's because I did everything myself. And if you let me explain, I could explain to you all the performance. And so um, that's the thing. Like I'm being accused of my 74R for last December. Well, all those signals, all those positions happened in real time in my Discord where we have we have almost 30 people there so i've got i've got 28 witnesses that can testify that my 74r is correct i i did them in real time and i calculate it with a spreadsheet now just because i don't have an automated tool and back test for that doesn't mean that those aren't valid i did them in real time so unless you can tell me how i did that in real time then stop accusing me it's it's one thing to talk to me in a rational discussion it's another thing to say that i'm a scammer or whatever and look this is going to happen you know if, if you are listening and you intend to grow and uh, become a you know more of a prominent uh personality on social media twitter with this um you're going to get accusations and and i understand that um and so i'm not here to say how you know how good or bad i am um, as a trader or as a person, I'm just saying like that's that's going to happen. The, the more popular that you get, um, you're going to get um, accusations and uh, people criticizing you. But very often, you know, I, I try to say this as humbly as possible. Like you're you're going to get that mostly from people that have their own issues, not just trading, but also in life. They've lost money or they they just they want to see you not be successful because they're not successful people themselves and instead of you trying to help them build themselves up they want to bring you down and so um, i get that i do try to reason with a lot of people but if you are coming to me hot-headed and not trying to be reasonable um that's that's a mute or a block depending on how fierce that is so um happy to discuss that um rationally if you decide to talk to me about that and so that that goes in play with this. I had somebody say, "Well, this because it's too high of a time frame. This isn't a divergence, um, which mathematically it is, but uh, it's some some time frame discussion. You know, it's like if you can't understand that different time frames matter at different times, 
then you should not be trading. I don't know how to say that, you know. Like, I, I can't, if you think 2 plus 2 equals 5, then we can't have a conversation. And if you are arguing with me that 2 plus 2 equals 4, and I, asking me how to come up with the sources for that, like, I'm just going to block you. Like, I, I don't mean that in a bad way, but just, like, I, as the older that I get and the higher that I get with my trading, um, you know, discipline, I just, I don't have time for some of the smaller, th especially, again, because they're being contesting. It's not that we're having an actual reasonable discussion. There's no please, there's no thank you. Like, can you, can I ask this if this is okay? It's more like, why are you doing this? Why, I see so many red flags. Why can't you do something about this? Or like, the guy in question was even like, what did he say? He's like, 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 he's just a, like a nobody, so to speak. I don't mean that in a bad way, but like 50 followers, right? So it's like, you're telling me what to do with my own stuff. And then asking me to give you free stuff to deal with it. Like, okay, you're, I don't understand. I, I, if you are listening, if you're that person that's listening, which you may or may not be, I don't know. But um, it's like, how, how do you come off so brash that way? And criticizing people, like you need to realize that you, you need to come from a position where you're not trying to be brash. And you really need to emphasize that. Don't just don't just assume that um, that you are not rude, okay? Like you need to come, you need to do due diligence that you are being friendly, okay? Or you're trying to be rational, especially in social media when that's hard to gauge. So you need to do due diligence to whoever it is, whether it's me or somebody else, um, to say, hey, let's have a rational discussion. And we can talk about that. But also know that I don't have to cater to things. If you're not making the due diligence to to come off as friendly or whatever, um, then we can't have a discussion. So I'm happy to discuss things um, very professionally and very very um, very casual. So anyway, I digress from that, but that's uh, part of it. So we go back to the four hour. We'll go ahead and turn this off. Uh, actually, we'll go to the daily first. So we kind of in this wedge a little bit, but again, we have um, the consolidation, mark up, mark down, consolidation, mark up. So again, that's where people are looking at a markdown. I mentioned in the academy, and I think I mentioned in um, another portfolio that I was expecting a red day today, but more as a consolidation period, um, to a continuation for next week. And this is seen a lot with like Ave. I have a position in Ave. And so uh, one thing I teach in the academy is don't sell if there's no weakness. Okay, uh, why, why? Why should you sell if there's no weak, there's no inherent weakness right here, right? There's no overextension, there's no divergence. There's nothing that tells me that there's a weakness here. Um, the only thing this really tells me is that we could have a hidden bull div, which is a sign that we are going to chop. And so we had, we had a, um, I took a long position here. We currently have a bearish trend that took us almost to break even. Now we're still above it, but that all that is is a subtrend that doesn't tell me that we've, we've gone bearish. This, this is not bearish. And so that's the thing. If we go back to Bitcoin, a lot of people also say, well, this is bearish. And I even seen some people say, show me on the chart where this is bullish. Well, I just showed you there's a rising wedge for one. There's a liquidity gap. There's number two, you know, and three, we're, we're, we're becoming exhausted here. Like we, we, we were at the first time we hit below 20,000 was the closing candle of June. If we want to be conservative about it, um, it was in uh, the 20th of June. So literally for almost half of last year, we've been in this consolidation range, uh, or roughly half the year. So um, we have fluctuated. So from below 19 to now, 15%. So we, we've only covered a ground of 15%. Let, let's just be generous and say 20%, right? Um, so if we do maybe to the ground, like 20%, all right? So let's do 20%. So for half of last year, we spent our time within a 20% range. That alone tells me that something is going on. Okay. And, and just like this tells me something is going on. This, this was something that I thought could be a bottom. Um, and I'll, I'll admit I was wrong about this one. 
But if you look at it from this standpoint, we had a consolidation here. So um, that was also a test of this area. And then we also double wick down here. So this was a good, this was a swing failure pattern with with a bullish engulfing and a bullish breaker. So this is a this was a good, this was very good of uh, of an analysis to say, hey, this is turning bullish. And I don't regret that. I was wrong. I was wrong. And I would do, I will be wrong again. I don't care. Because um, over time, you're going to realize that this is the right call. It just wasn't the call that time. So um, obviously we know now that that was not the case. Um, and I'll just get rid of this here. And so that went ahead and went through. Now we're getting kind of the same thing. And guess what? Um, I might be wrong. That's okay. But I'm not going to be wrong too many times in a row. That's the thing. Over time, this analysis will prove correct. And I didn't lose very much money here. I sold here. I lost a little bit of money here by trying to buy in. Lost a little bit of money here by trying to buy in. And now I currently have some money here. And it, it remains to be seen whether I'll gain or lose money from that. And that's okay. Because guess what? This is not going to happen 10 times. Not on this time frame. And so, um, you know, we talk about the markets having much more um, perseverance than you, so to speak. Well, not if you apply your positions correctly. And so that's the thing. Like, obviously, you want to be safe. And I'm not deploying a, an insane amount of my portfolio. But this is worth mentioning. It's not going to happen uh, too many times. So um, this is another position I currently have on uh, Bitcoin. And so we, we've had this kind of um, consolidation before resistance. We've had a big supply, uh, or demand zone rather. Um, so that's <clears throat> that's looking pretty good to me. I'm not I'm not concerned about this at all. Um, we have not made a, a, a low down to here. This is the invalidation point and we're holding above it. You know, minus, minus 0.07%, that's nothing. Okay, this is, this is not stocks. You know, we, um, a, a two three percent fluctuation is is a regular day for crypto assets so um, i do like this position although i can understand how sketchy this looks like the problem is if you make a break up above here you're at risk of being a deviation um so and then you got um this area right here that could serve as resistance so by the time somebody's up here trying to buy i'm already selling so that's kind of the, the, the position a little bit underwater but it happens, right? So um, it is what it is. And to go to Ethereum, uh, two week chart, or right, let's go to the one week. I don't really spend one. I don't want to spend too much time on high time frames, but <clears throat> again, really, um, just want to emphasize what I've been emphasizing. We got the retest from this consolidation period, very Adam and Eve like, and that's what I've been focusing on. And and I'll I'll mention this again for probably like the tenth time. Unless we make a new low, there's no freaking point to short, okay? I really want to emphasize that. Until we get a new low at this point, we don't want to short. Um, because it's just not profitable to do so. You're going to run into this demand zone and this one, okay? I don't remember what my, um doesn't show anything for this time frame. But I want to emphasize that. So if you look at... Look at the high time frame perspective. Um, we didn't break down to a new low until we broke this point. Again, do low, down, downward move. So we failed to make a new downward move here. Um, if we do get to this point, it's going to accelerate. It's going to probably accelerate down to 654. And so uh, probably to at least 800. Um, and so I, I don't know. I'm not sold on the fact that we're going to go down to 300 and 400. I just don't think so. We There is a chance that we could hit this zone. See, I think the, a line would be better. Because this is a bullish breaker, and typically we retest those. So that's those are kind of like um, my bottom bids. And if we get there, I'm going to bid pretty freaking heavily. But I don't think that we're going to get there, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> So again, I come from the standpoint, and this, this is speculation until proven otherwise. And the reason I think this is speculation is because we currently have a really good retest right here. It's retested several times, one, two, three, four, five, six, um, and an expansion from that. So to me, this looks like an Adam and Eve pattern where it's a V shape and then a U shape. And so your signal for that, your confirmation of Adam and Eve is when we get to this point. 
about two thousand dollars and so <clears throat> um it amazes me how many good traders there are I, i'm not sure if i should be um confounded or if i should be maybe like maybe I, my own analysis is wrong right because i see a lot of good traders that are saying that we're going to go down by 50 percent um and a lot of people that a lot of a lot of good traders that i've respected for years um when i was a new trader um think that we're going to go to 500 and i'm not sure if i should be concerned or not because they're typically are good traders but i i honestly don't see that i don't see that from any of my analysis i don't if we get to this point, if we get below um, to the low 1,000 range, yes, I will reconsider. But right now, we are hovering on the lows, but we are not hovering as if we're on thin ice. We are rejecting it. So this is a good retest. <clears throat> and again, this could always be wrong because, again, we also had a retest from this area. We went to expansion, and then we dropped back down. So I'm going to look for that if that occurs. But right now, looks pretty clean. Um, so we'll we'll see into we'll see into that. We also might have, um, depending on your perspective, um, a continuation triangle, and so that's one thing to look at. We, you also might be able to position this on the candle bodies. If so, that's still valid. Um, so that's another thing. But typically, when we get when we get a triangle whether it's continuation or not, if we get something like this and then we get this hovering on the low end, it does tend to expand bullish. We had that with um, Litecoin. If we go on the daily, I mentioned this um, right here. So we had, um, looks better if we do this, right? So we had, we had this going on, had two touches, three touches technically, had this going on. But then we have this consolidation period on the lows. And typically when that happens, it expands the opposite way. It goes bullish in this case instead of bearish. We had the, the bullish breaker here and it broke from this range. Um, so this was your retest point. This is where I bought in. Um, this is this is a, a different position, but I think it was on the four hour that I discussed this. Um, I made the position here and we had the expansion. I sold here because of this point. And then I think I bought again. Um, but you can see how this looks. And this looks better on the daily from what I'm trying to share. Is that we do get consolidations. And when you get consolidations on trend lines, they tend to uh, resist. Um, and so that's one thing to keep in mind. Don't don't look at a break until it breaks. Um, like that's, that's one of the biggest key mistakes that I see is like... Um, a short or long position somebody wants to get into it and it's hovering at a certain trend line or resistance or support and they want to make a position and they they don't get it because it's not broken yet wait for confirmation um, so that's that's worth uh, bringing into mind but this is that's ethereum here um, on the four hour <clears throat> kind of have this expansion again bullish breaker so i'm expecting us to go to at least 1228 probably retest 1213 and that's not too far off right that's nothing um that's nothing significant in my opinion um the problem is we're at the point now we're like um we're we're at the point where like a three percent move people start saying oh we're gonna go back to new lows that that's a good sign that sentiment wise um bearish price action is probably coming to an end sooner than later. I, I do think that this year is going to be a green year. Um, I think at the most we're going to get maybe three months of bearish. Uh, not not in a row, but like from a month to month basis, we'll have three red months at the most. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But that's kind of some ideas that I see on here. Um, another thing, I'm going to cover some of the main chains uh, today since it's, it's been a while. Um, Binance is one of them. We kind of been this weird, you know, I, I mentioned this also in the Academy. We kind of have some weird, very weird Adam and Eve structure. Um, very almost manufactured in a sense, but we had, did have the expansion. Now we're testing of uh, the previous area right at this range. So again, price action perspective, I would look for <clears throat> a break of this range into probably the 270 region 
um, to long that if you're interested that's kind of where I would put the position like maybe here at the lows and for a longer time frame perspective something like this now I know you guys don't like to trade the daily um, I think people should be in a better practice of trading higher time frames I think that they're just easier they're more predictable and you make less tra you make less trades and you make just as much money if not more like why put yourself into more work than you need to do like if i told you you could make um 10 grand a, a month salary by only working 10 hours a week would you do it i think everybody would um and here's your chance to do it if you have if you have enough capital to, to deploy you could do that um so don't think you know the the, the trading you know i trade crypto full time now and a lot of that's very scary, right? Um, but don't think that you... S don't look at all the, the cool ways that people try to do it. Like, don't look at how the movies portray it, things like that. Like, you don't have to spend your time... Like, Limitless or something. And Limitless is a, is a dumb movie to reference, right? Because the guy did it for, like, 15 freaking minutes. You know, like, he wasn't emphasized on that. It was just some sort of, like, thing that he did to try to make money. And it, it's a fictional movie, right? And so, don't mean to get on these rants, but people try to um, make that their personality. They really do. Um, Wolf of Wall Street. Um, that's a terrible movie, in my opinion. Uh, I'll just be honest. Uh, it's it's a very um, immoral movie. Um, you know, I, I know you you may disagree with me on that, or you may not like the fact that I said that. But this is also my channel, so I can I can say what I want. Um, and if if you want to say something else, then I'll watch your channel, and you can link. You can link that to me. I'm okay, um, but from my perspective, like the guy, um, it, you you I, I say that though because there's a consistency between a lot of the sensationalism of of Wall Street, which is like crypto is supposed to be anti Wall Street, right? But you see this thing where it's like you need to be um, like a really immoral person to make money um, or what have you, you know? So it's like, no, not really. Um, I just I don't see I don't see the worship for these kind of movies um, because most of these portray those people in a bad light they just make money and okay that's fine you want to make money good that's one reason we are here but at the same time is, is it worth sacrificing your integrity um, and so same with um, uh, you know maybe it is maybe it is Wolf of Wall Street I'm thinking of but there's other ones like Margin Call is another one um, where you know that that's that's a good movie. I, I did like it. My my favorite my favorite one is actually The Big Short, um, and that portrayed a, a good narrative, right? Um, and so there's 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 other ones too. Um, I can't I can't think of um, I can't think of the uh, uh, um, the one with Gordon or whatever. I can't think of what what those movies are. Um, but there there's a pattern, right? There's there's a sense of you know even something like the you know, American Psycho or whatever. It's like we're really basing our personalities off crazy people. Like, um, I just I don't get it. Like, I don't I don't get the understanding of trying to be cool when these movies and these characters are specifically designed to be insane, not cool people. Um, so anyway, I, I again another rant, but maybe I'll stop doing rants. But as far as as far as the actual crypto trading lifestyle, there's a lot of pros and cons, right? Like the pro is, is like I'm sitting in my desk. I can do this anytime I want. Um, I can go out with my family anytime I want. I am a family man, so that does play into my structure of how I live my life versus someone that, like, let's say if you're a single guy, that's probably half my age, right? So or or what have you. But um, so that that does play into it. But I do want to emphasize that. Um, if you are looking to, uh, if you are looking to trade crypto full time to get that lifestyle, you are going to be very disappointed. You are, you will be extremely, extremely disappointed. Um, you know, and, and you've heard the joke like you trade your nine to five to, to trade twenty four seven, and that's that's a very unhealthy way to look at it. You, um, you need to prioritize um, time. Um, you need to prioritize your time on the charts. Um, people will think, you know, like my family thinks that I don't have a job. And so <clears throat> I've, I've kind of finally persuaded them to understand like, Hey, I do have a job. I just work from home, 
But now they're saying, okay, you're always home, so now you can do this, you can do this, you can come over, you can do this. And that's not true either. Um, so now people will start to think that you're available 24-7 and you're you're not. So you, you get all these you get all these changes, right? So um, I want to emphasize that there's a lot of good things, uh, but you are, you there's a lot of bad things too. But the crypto lifestyle, the whole Wall Street trading lifestyle you see on 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 movies is very fake. But some of that is true. But you don't you don't don't be that guy, right? Like just come on, like don't be that guy that sacrifices your entire life and your family just to make some extra bucks that ain't gonna matter when you're six feet under. Okay. That's what I'm trying to say. So um, just don't be that guy, right? Because um, at a certain point, it doesn't matter how much money you make. And, and my wife will tell me this as well. Like, if I have a chance to make 50 grand in one month, she says, go ahead and do it. If it's just one month, go ahead and do it. But if it's if it's 50 grand every month for the next 12 months, um, okay, maybe do that once. But if that's 50 grand every month for the next three years, no. Um, mainly because as far as like having to sacrifice being with my family like i can i can sacrifice being away from my family for a week or a month especially if we're making a lot of money um a year it depends how much money that is but over a three to five year span no because by the time i i i finally get around to it i look at my son and he's a grown man you know i want to do that you know he's six um and i've I've lost a few of those memories, but not many. I've, I've been pretty good about keeping that up, and I don't regret it. I could have made more money than I have. I don't regret it. So that's that's the trade-off. Don't be that guy that trades that trades your lifestyle for just some you know fake money at the end of the day, whether that's dollars or whether that's Binance coin or whatever. You know, it's just you're not taking this with you when you die. Okay, that's um, anyway ranted about that. But uh, if you are looking to get into crypto full time that's something you got to consider um for me my optimization is trading less um and spending less time on charts a lot of that's just setting, setting alerts like if i want to take this position i just set an alert it's easy as that and then once this happens i get a message on my phone i got i got two phones on my desk <coughs> or two devices rather um i also got uh the computer that I'm working on. This is mainly a work computer. I don't use this for anything casual. I have a tablet as well. Um, I also have um, I have a smartwatch. So I've got five devices where I can get notified if I have an alert. And then depending on my situation, I do something about it. If alert doesn't happen, let's say you have let's say you have two alerts right here, right? And then if you're if the if you don't get an alert on your phone that means the price is still within this range. So you don't gotta look at the dang chart, right? So um, just keep that in mind if you're trying to go with a full-time perspective. And some I, I say that because some of you guys will. You're going to think in the next two years this is gonna be super bullish and you're gonna think this is life-changing money. And if you make life-changing money, change your life, always. I, I'm telling you right now, if you make life-changing money, change your life. Um, because in most circumstances, by the time you make that life-changing money, the top is getting closer, or you're going to regret uh, not taking a chance. You know, I've seen a lot of people make quarter of a million dollars on NFTs, and they lost all their money. I've seen people lose all their money in FTX. I've seen, I've seen so many situations where people could have made a huge lifestyle change and they didn't because they wanted to make more, and that's that's the problem that I see. And again, with a lot of these movies. There's a sense, there's this kind of sensational aspect where I've already made so much money, I'm going to make more and more and more and more and more. Well, guess what? The house eventually wins at some point. The more you add on, the house will eventually win. That's how casinos win. That's how probability and statistics works. That's how Monte Carlo statistics work. I, I know all these things that work for statistics wise to show you that eventually you will lose your money if you keep um, keep messing around with it right so take strategic moves take disciplined moves don't be that guy that stands out in a crowd don't be a target for certain people don't obsess with this kind of stuff um, use this to accent your life that you want um, don't make it your life if if that makes sense so i digress i spent a lot of time on that but i think that is worth mentioning um, as far as binance chain on the lower time frame 
have this consolidation kind of got kind of a rounded top TP formation. So this remains to be seen if this is going to break. Usually this is a sign that it comes back down. Um, this sharp impulse also makes me think that this, since this is a bullish breaker, that it will come back down. <clears throat> um, so we'll see on that. My, my stance would be, again, wait for this to come up here before you um, take position. All right, so we're going to go to Dogecoin. And again, we'll touch the weekly. Not a lot of history on this. Maybe I'll look at it from buying. I tend to prefer KuCoin's um, chart, even though their engine isn't as good. But <clears throat> I've emphasized this also in the Academy, and I think somewhere else too, that here was your legacy rounded bottom. And, and so again, from hindsight, this looks pretty good, right? Um, that's where you'd probably want to have a long position. But now we've hovered on that for quite some time. We had a push up from the Musk uh, takeover of Twitter. Now we're kind of retesting this point uh, somewhat. Um, I think this is a good legacy long to take. Um, I have not taken it personally because um, I'm waiting for some other factors. <clears throat> but this is a good position. Don't think that we're just going to go down below here. And that's, again, I, I, you know, I keep going on these, these rants, but I want to emphasize during bear markets, we have a tendency to say like, well, that's low, but I went lower, you know, or I went lower again, lower again, lower again. And so your your temptation is to say, okay, that's good, but I went lower and lower and lower. And so that that's the same, that's, that's not much, I'm not saying that's gambling, but that is very reminiscent of the gambling aspect of gambling addictions. And so the temptation is, let's say you're playing uh, red or black or whatever. I don't even know, I don't even know the name of that. But like you bet on you bet on red, and your temptation is okay. You won. Let's let's bet some more on red. Let's more on red. More on red. Let's switch to black because the, the probability is more likely to switch different colors. And so um, again, the house eventually wins. In this case, you're going to keep thinking lower, and it's going to go up without you. And so in this case, the chart wins. And so you're going to get a much higher position that you want, and you're probably gonna be buying higher than you probably would buy here. Some of you guys are probably gonna wait until it gets below this range. If it does, or you're anticipating it's gonna go like right here, let's say. So let's say you're not even you're not even wanting to go below here, you're trying to be reasonable and get kind of the halfway point between current price and the legacy price. But what if it just goes straight up from here? And then now you're probably gonna buy up here because this would be a good price point to buy long term but now you've you bought 300 percent higher than what you anticipated and so now it left without you you were willing to buy at a higher price and that's that's what i don't understand if we go back to bitcoin well i understand it from a psychology perspective but so many people were so willing to buy all their money right here you know and i know people that bought at the top but nobody wants to buy here why this is a great this is a great price point for the next two years this is great this is fantastic i'm not saying it's going to be I, I can't just outright say it because you guys know how the financial advice crap works but this is a this is probably a fantastic buy for the next 12 you know 12 to 24 months and i've i've bought here i've been very public about buying at 16.5 and i've only made 300 bucks that's okay it's okay um, because I, I anticipate we're going to get to a new high within two years. That's my personal take, that we will get a new high within 24 months. And so um, that's just how I see it, you know, and I I don't want to take the position that I, I, I don't want to look back at this and regret not buying. I, I'm, I'm okay with losing money potentially at the expense of also... I'd rather say that, hey, I lost a little bit of money and I made a mistake versus, hey, I, I knew this could have been the bottom and I didn't take the chance. Um, I've learned enough in my life, you know, and I'm a little bit older than some crypto people, but I've learned enough in my life to know that taking chances um, is the best route to take as long as they're calculated chances. You know, it, it's you you will regret chances that you don't take. Um, and you, and you, of course, you're going to regret chances that didn't work in your favor. That that's just how it works too. But you can't be afraid to take chances. Um, you can't just take a chance, forget to take chances at all. Like I've, um, 
And we also have this here I, I saw. It's kind of interesting. But, you know, I saw a quote yesterday. It says, um, a ship... A ship at bay is a safe is a safe ship, but that's not what ships are built for. And so, the thing is, yeah, um, you if you're in crypto, you are a you are a ship. Um, okay, you're a boat, you know, um, and you are at bay, and you can sit there, and you are not at risk of any sort of weather for the most part. Um, you're not really risk at drowning, so to speak. You're not really at risk at anything. But do you want to be that guy that has a party on a boat that's um, connected to connected to the shoreline? Or do you want to be out in the middle of nowhere, enjoying your life, you know, whether you party or whatever you do? Do you want to do that as ships and boats are meant, or yachts are meant to um, be placed at? Or you want to be safe at bay? You could be safe at bay, and that's a safe route to take, but that's not what yachts are built for. Yachts are built to be going out on the horizon um, just traveling the seas and the waters as as you feel like you should um, enjoying your life um, that you've gained in that regard and so don't be that guy that buys a yacht and just keeps it parked you know you know take take calculated risks keep in mind that risks do happen and be prepared for those um, but don't don't complain um, that you lost you, you didn't make money because you didn't take a chance so anyway Going back to Dogecoin, we can stay on the KuCoin chart for this. Um, had the fade. This was a short. I shorted from this position. Um, kind of hovering on the on the the retest of this area right here. Again, a lot of this is just retests. Um, things either trend or they range. And so right now, <clears throat> we had a trend until it got to the range point, and then it retested. Simple as that. Um, right now, this re remains to be seen. I think that we're going to go down below into the blue block about um, six at six point two cents. Um, let's cover. I think my rants took up some time, so I want to cover Solana because I think there was a new coin um, put on the Solana chain, and I think just to be kind of a, a middle finger, so to speak, uh, for some people. But this was a very interesting um, position because. We had a high time frame reclaim. This looks like it might be a divergence, but I don't think that it is. Um, no, this isn't. So it's very, let me check the third day just to make sure. Um, I mean this, no, that's not either. But what this, what this shows you, um, let's, again, let's go to Binance because they have a longer history. And let's go ahead and up the, to the three day and then we'll get rid of this to get more space. So looking at this from a three-day perspective, here was your uh, legacy consolidation that led to the initial uptrend. Um, you had a consolidation down move with FTX, consolidation down move. And so um, these these lines, you can't really see them. I'll try to zoom up a little bit and go like this. So here's your initial run up, $4 range, um, mark up, consolidation continuation of that markup. <clears throat> this marks that consolidation period. This marks the retest. So if we go all the way back um, to current price action, we can see that SPF um, from the first legacy point, and then it, it struck back up. Now this this is very interesting. This is a this is a this is a very very interesting pattern because this is bullish and bearish depending on how you view it. Um, from a bullish standpoint, we reclaimed it to a new zone, or to the previous zone. If we look at the consolidation period. And um, we look at the order block. It's it stands right here at the midpoint. Um, so that's that's a decent reclaim. At the same time, this isn't exactly bullish bullish because we need to reclaim the whole zone. Plus, this is again a bullish breaker. So that also means that we're going to retest back to the lows at uh, right around ten dollars. And so I'm not sold on this being a long term trend. I have told people I'm looking for a four day bullish trend on the Aaron consolidation. And once this turns blue, I'm a buyer. If not, um, not, not even caring. And so um, this does look promising. Usually when the bands constrict like this, that means we do get a retest down to that point. So about 11 and a half, you know, 1170 roughly. And so that could mean a continuation. Um, but until then it remains to be seen. 
uh, what this will do long term. But that's a very interesting coin right now. I think, again, this is another one, and me included, where you see something like this and you're like, well, I want to buy lower. Like, I am one of the guys that I want to buy at $5. I do. Um, but is it going to happen? Um, so that's the thing. I'm personally waiting for the four day. That's that's kind of been my MO. So my MO has always been play on the safe side. So I'm playing on a four day trend, a good combination of long, long-term long confirmation without the noise of a one day. Because sometimes there is noise on a one day. Because you look at it like this. If you look, um, go into trend zone, had a potential buy here, potential buy here, here, and now here. And so what I usually do is I wait until the price goes above uh, the band to start buying in. And so there's a lot of noise here for me. And so it makes no sense to buy on that time frame. If I look at the four day, we've only had one, two. So um, I sold my entire bag up at the highs from Bitcoin. I don't know if I had Solana at the time. I, I think I did, but I can't remember. But I did buy a little bit here. Um, I don't think I bought that one because uh, I was concerned about Solana anyway. Um, but if if I take my strategy to buy on four-day time frames, I only would have tried to buy twice versus like 20 times, right? So that saves me a lot of money, saves me a lot of headache. And so eventually when this does turn bullish, um, it's going to do something like this, right? So I'm going to buy here, sell, and then buy again. And so with this, I think this was the beginning of it. Um, if I sold here, I would have made a 10x just on that alone. Um, <clears throat> and then here, uh, if I'm being conservative, another 3.4x. So that, that's how I view that. Um, so I think um, I think that's going to cover it for now. Um, I will cover, I'm going to cover Ave um, a little bit because I like this chart a lot. Um, on the one week, this is a very attractive position. Um, we also have the bullish divergence. I really like this. I really do. Um, and liquidity also kind of confirms that. And so this is a coin. One reason I like this is one, we're getting a bullish divergence on the one week time frame, which is a good solid week of, of to have a divergence, a good solid time frame to have that divergence. And so that's going to give you a lot of time to go in. And Aave is one of those coins that is probably the best um, product in the DeFi lineup. I, I would argue that it is the best. It's like the king of the hill of DeFi. Um, and, and not really intentionally so. Like it's a very humble project and coin versus other ones. Um, and so you can compare that to like Chainlink, which is another prominent coin. Um, but we're not quite getting not quite getting that reaction. Um, we are um, we are getting our divergence though, um, but um, but we've we've retested the lows from this point, and, and I think maybe we should check a different time or a time exchange. So we're kind of getting roughly the same thing, but we're kind of in the kind of in a gap zone. Um, but it's still very similar to where like Ave looks much more healthier, right? Um, it's at a good retest point. Got the divergence, got the liquidity that I'm looking for. Um, and again, it's a coin that is doing well. If I would, if you had to force me to tell you one absolute coin that will probably make its all-time high, I would absolutely say Ave. And so I like this position uh, quite a bit. And so um, if you go to all-time high close, you're looking at uh, a little bit over 8x. Um, if you want to go to all-time wicks, you're talking 10x. So and that's not a lot compared to other coins, but that's a good hedge in my opinion. Um, and so I'll cover S and X, which is another coin. I mentioned these both on Twitter, so this isn't this isn't some big discovery, but I really like the S and X chart here. Um, again, we have the one week divergence, um, but we also have a reclaim of the legacy range, which is typically um, let's try a different chart. It doesn't have all these stupid wicks. Um, um, there we go. Not, but we don't have the history. Um, so anyway, let's uh, let's go. You know, let's just stay with KuCoin, I guess. Um, so you kind of see what I'm saying, right? <clears throat> so um, retest of the legacy, that tends to be where it bounces from. So I like this position. Synthetics is a decentralized um, derivatives protocol, and so a lot of a lot of your 
uh, there's a lot of emphasis on DeFi because people are scared about FTX. We'll see how we'll see how true that plays out, right? A lot of people are screaming DeFi now. I've always been talking about DeFi, but let's see when rubber hits the road if people even care about that two years from now, right? Um, the all-time high is about 15x, so that's looking pretty good. So I wanted to mention those two coins, but anyway, I hope you appreciated this. Uh, my coffee is cold, and that's okay. That's just how it works. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe, um, retweet, whatever you feel like you want to do. Um, if you disagree with me or agree with me, you can leave a comment. Tell me what you like, what you don't like, um, etc. Et um, so um, that's it for the video, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.